Okay. B, I found the router box. Uh, have fast internet. I think it's gonna be cool. The internet and stuff. Is there anybody inside my basement right now? Just shut up and get over here. Just shut up and get closer. closer. Ten minute patty. What the fuck is this? Bedroll ads. What the fuck is this There's a bunch of board games here. Seven Wonders. A trail. Flash. Oh, I don't remember ever buying this. It looks in pretty good condition too. Year is 2016. League of Legends is at its peak and although Dunkey just recently quit the game, the player base is still going strong. There is no Fortnite. Jake and Logan Paul are just starting to become popular and I was still making actual champion spotlights. Online gaming was becoming a huge trend. Esports was taking over and MOBAs were being pushed left and right. It was truly a great time to be alive. And standing above it all was a small indie company by the name of Riot Games. And how did they decide to capitalize on their success? They made a board game. That's right, the League of Legends board game that came out in October 2016, which they are still selling, by the way, for $75 each. Now, I bought this when it first came out. Uh, I was part of the first wave. In fact, if you look on the back right here, it says that we're number 13,427 that got produced, wave one. That means we got a collectible right here, boys. Mm. <laughs> if this is number 13,427, that means... That means that they made at least $2 million off of just this board game, off of this bad boy right here, third. $2 million off of, Jesus Christ. Now $75 is a pretty steep price considering that one of the best board games in the world, Don't Wake Daddy, only costs $25, so the fuck's going on here, right? Initially, I was supposed to make a video playing this game with people, but I just never got around to it. I don't know why, I think I was just busy doing other things so the game started to collect dust in a closet, but it was always in the back of my mind to play this damn thing. I mean, I don't even remember many people talking about it after it came out, and I haven't heard anyone even mention it at all since then, but it's gotta be doing decently well since now they're on wave three of its production, so at the very least, about 60,000 people bought the game. But for some reason, all I remember doing is opening up the box, looking inside, and thinking, damn. What the fuck is going on? This game is no joke. There's a lot of parts in it, and the manual and rulebook look pretty intimidating. I mean, you open the box, and there's a bunch of stuff. And then you lift off the top part, and there's more stuff. And just when you thought there wasn't more stuff, there's more stuff. And then, when you thought there wasn't more stuff, there's more fucking stuff. Even the box is intimidating. Look how wide it is. Look how wide and tall it is, and just sexy and sleek and hot and if you rub it enough times, a genie comes out and grants you a wish. And it's actually heavy. You can't tell because of my massive strength. Also, all the pieces are out on this table right now. You know how usually if there's an intruder, you have like a baseball bat at the corner of your bed? Or maybe if you're feeling frisky, a gun. Instead, you could just probably just use this entire box 
as a way to just fend off people. There's five mechs, 100 minions, one bomb piece, four crystal shards, one gear tracker, two gear rings, four rune coins, 96 command cards, 55 damage cards, five map tiles, one school, one color compass, five command lines, two dice, two rune dice, one Zonia's minute glass, get it? One rule book, one tutorial, 10 mission envelopes. Jesus, I, I think in total we've got over 300 pieces and apparently there's stuff in these envelopes too. That's a lot of shit. But I mean, you have to hand it to Riot. They really did a good job with the pieces for this game. I mean, it looks really cool. The amount of detail that went into this is really astounding and it doesn't feel cheap at all. Like I thought these coins were just plastic, but there's some kind of metal and even the dice look cool. Now, apparently you can even paint these figures, but we're not gonna do that because uh, uh, I, I, have, I have carpal tunnel in my little gamer hands. So we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. I actually don't have carpal tunnel. It's just that I I'm I don't I don't want to paint them. When opening the box, you're greeted with this letter from Rumble that basically tells you where to start with the master mechanic tutorial and the master mechanic field guided textbook. Wait, master mechanic tutorial? Wait, there's a tutorial for a board game? I didn't even know that was something you could do. Usually a board game just sets up the board and lets you just, you know, go crazy and figure it out as you go. But no, in Max vs. Minions, it literally gives you a tutorial. And not just one tutorial. No, you get two tutorials. Like, imagine getting your friends together and being like, dude, guys, you guys want to play this really cool game? It cost me $75. And guess what? There's so much shit that you can do in it. It's really, really fun. Uh, yeah, you guys want to play? You guys want to play the game? Yeah, here, play the two tutorials first and then get back to me. The tutorial is actually pretty helpful because there's a bunch of information that you got to jam into your brain as fast as possible if you want to make sure your friends don't get bored by the time you're done explaining the rules. So Mechs vs Minions is a cooperative adventure game, so there's no real winner like most board games. You and your team have to work together to defeat the challenges and different stages to move on to the next level. Each person chooses between playing as Tristana, Ziggs, Corky, and Heimerdinger, and they all get their own command console to play their command cards, which are these things. There's four different types types of command cards, fire, electric, metal, and computery. At the start of every round, the first player, who's decided by rolling the rune die and seeing what color it lands on, and the player the compass is pointing at when you roll it is the one who goes first. But you could just pick someone, I don't think that part really matters at all. Anyways, the start of every round, the first player deals out five cards face up, and each player drafts one card from the list and puts it on the command line discarding the final card. You then do whatever the card says from the left all the way to the right. So it could be first turn 90 degrees. Then move three spaces. Turn 180 degrees. And then attack again. You can even upgrade your cards if they're in the same element. So if you have three blue commands, the one on top does the third upgrade to it. That process keeps going on until you finish the mission. Draft your cards, put them on your command line, execute the command line, rinse and repeat. You know, it's pretty simple. For the tutorial, you just grab one tile and work together to destroy the crystal shards. After that, motherfucking kaboom! Things are changing here, boys. Instead of crystal shards, you know what you get now? Motherfucking minions, my dudes! Ah! These bastards move in the direction you roll the rune die according to the color of the compass. Your mechs can stomp on them to kill them or use their damage cards to destroy them. But if one lands next to you and you can't kill them, then you have to draw a damage card and these fuckers are a pain in the ass. There's three types of damage cards. Glitches apply an effect immediately and are discarded. System damage are ongoing effects. Slot damage, you roll the dice and whatever number it lands on, that card is now part of your command line. You even got a new ability where you can scrap a card from the draft phase in order to heal yourself from damage by removing a slot damage card, or you can use them to swap the position of the command line because once you put your cards down, their positions can't be moved. So you just have to destroy the minions on the board and once all of them are destroyed, you win. <laughs> The tutorial ends and tells you to open up the next mission called Operation Kill the Americans. Oh, wait, no, that's different. Operation Short Fuse. It's time to open up some motherfucking missions, baby. Boom, Tiny Evil, a short fuse, Tempest Heart, B Bandle City Beatdown. Get, get wrecked, that's... That's one. Hammer Keeper, Dazzling, Dazzling Danger, Burning Vengeance, Burning Vengeance, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, <laughs> Missing Link, yeah. Magical Banana. Ah, oh, it's top secret. Don't look, don't look at them. Like, honestly, this is what made me not want to play the game 
because like I just I didn't want to open up these packs, dude. They look so cool and they're top. It says top secret. I don't want to open it and then ruin my immersion. There's a cute little dossier inside that tells you how to set up the game for this mission and what new rules and challenges are added to the game. And in every mission, there's an escalation mode where once a specific action happens, it triggers an event to make the mission even more challenging. In this mission, you have to tug the bomb, which is this thing right here. It's it's, it's, it's spiky. Don't it's the, what is this? This is like. God, Jesus Christ, you can actually hurt someone with this if you threw it hard enough. So you take the bomb and you pull it across the board onto the repair pad. And once this bomb leaves the school, it activates the escalation event. And now, the drafting phase where you pick your cards is now set on a one minute timer using the Zonia's Minute Glass. On top of that, every round minions spawn on the empty rune spaces that are trying to destroy your bomb. If the bomb takes five points of damage, then you lose. Plus, you even got your new overdrive ability that charges up every time you kill 5 minions. When your team kills a total of 75 minions, everyone gets access to their overdrive ability. And that's not it, because everyone also gains new cards with their character, and after your overdrive counter gets to a certain number, that character gets to activate their new mech schematic to make their unit even fucking stronger. Oh, I see your bomb is right here. It would be a real shame if it f fucking just died. There's so much that can happen in the game, and it's all really entertaining. There's about 10 different missions in the game, each one adding in new challenges and making the game more and more complex. So going from the tutorial and following the roadmap onwards, it's actually very helpful. But if there's a mission that you really enjoy, you can always just pull that bad boy out and play it with everyone. And when you're all done with the missions, you can even go online and make up your own mission on their website to test out and play with your friends. Print it out, put it in an envelope, and bada bing bada boom, you're now a board game designer. Congratulations! There's even some extra levels and challenges the website gives you that you can play as standalone missions and challenges to try and overcome with your friends. If you go onto their website, they even have this radio play that you can listen to that goes with the voice actors as they play along with like the situation on what's happening in the game. So we could just click on one right here and we'll do... Um... In all, the game is actually pretty fucking cool. The only bad part is that if you're playing with just two people, I found that some of the missions can just be a little bit too tedious and hard. It's definitely a game to be played with the max amount of players in order to get a really good vibe about it. There's so much going on with this game and each mission is probably going to take you about an hour to complete. So you're looking at about a 10 hour long board game. Obviously it should be played in parts, but you'll definitely get your money's worth out of this game. There's even a stage that uses a lava wall that slowly creeps up through the board, which I haven't gotten to yet, but it looks fucking cool. In fact, I don't even know what these coins do. And I haven't even gotten to what was inside this box. I don't even know what this is. There's and there's more cards inside of it. But yeah, that's Mechs versus Minions. It cost $75. Uh it came out in 2016. Haven't heard a lot of people talk about it, but I think it's really good. I uh honestly, I think I like this. This is kind of like the same concept of um uh Betrayal of House on the Hill. I think that I like this more than that. It's a lot of fun. It's super immersive. Uh and uh uh yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this rundown of Mechs vs. Minions. If you guys liked it, please leave a like, press subscribe, and if you guys want to see more stuff where I talk about board games and shit like that, please let me know, and I, I maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't, maybe I'll just be a rat bastard. Who, who cares? Squeesh. Yo, Matt, I'm freaking loving all the content, and I'm so happy you're getting back into it, and it really seems like you're a genuinely happier person just trying to, like, push for stuff that you want, and I, I, I think that's really cool that you're not just doing stuff just to do it anymore. You're doing things because it genuinely seems like you love to do them, and that's awesome, and I think everybody could take a page from that. Uh, have a nice one. Um, Yeah, do some more TFT shit. Boy!